This video was made possible by Skillshare. Start learning for free for two months by signing up at skl.sh slash reallifelore33. Okay, so if you're watching this, there's been a big problem. You've touched something that you didn't realize was a time machine, and you've inadvertently been transported back through time, and you have no idea where or when you are. Understandably, this is a highly stressful situation for you, but have no fear. Through this quick and simple tutorial, you'll be able to quickly and hopefully safely be able to figure out what year you're actually trapped in, and from that, you'll hopefully be able to survive. All right, so first things first, let's start from the very beginning. Has the Big Bang happened yet? If not, that's uh, pretty weird and you're stuck sometime before 13.8 billion years ago. I can't really help you very much with that, so hopefully the answer to that question was yes, it has happened. So if so, the next important question to ask is, is there a planet where the Earth is supposed to be? If there isn't, well, you're trapped sometime between 13.8 and 4.54 billion years ago, and you're probably pretty screwed unless you have a spacesuit. If Earth does exist, proceed to question three. Are you immediately being being consumed by molten lava. If yes, then it's very important for you to look up and see if the Earth has a moon or not yet before you die. If there is no moon, well, it means you're in a very narrow window of 40 million years between 4.54 and 4.5 billion years ago. Unfortunately for you, a protoplanet is going to collide with Earth during this time eventually, so you're gonna violently die no matter what. On the other hand, if you do see a moon, it means that you're still drowning in lava, but at least you get to watch the moon rotating around between 4 4.5 and 3.8 billion years ago. On to question 4 now. If you're not immediately melting, are you immediately suffocating and unable to breathe? Because if you are, you're unfortunately between 3.8 billion and 850 million years ago when the Earth was full of carbon dioxide and it didn't have enough oxygen yet for you to breathe. So basically, if you aren't immediately dying, you're sometime after 850 million years ago, which is great. So question 5. Do you see any animals wandering around on the land? If you don't, you're gonna be extremely lonely and you're between 850 million and 530 million years ago. If you do though, do you see any plants along with them? Because if you only see animals and not any plants, it means you're stuck somewhere between 530 million and 450 million years ago. It won't be necessarily pretty, but at least you've got some pretty quirky little animals to hang out with. Okay, next up, do you see any dinosaurs? If yes, it still kinda sucks, but you're somewhere between 232 million and 65 million years ago. The other question that ties into this one though is, do you see any mammals? Mammals and dinosaurs evolved alongside one another. So if you don't see any mammals, you probably don't see any dinosaurs either, and you're probably stuck sometime before 232 million years ago with the amphibians. If you only see mammals and no dinosaurs, it means that you're sometime after 65 million years ago, which probably leads us into the most important question. Do you see any humans or creatures that look like humans lurking around? Because if you don't, well, we already know that you're sometime after 65 million years ago if you only see other mammals. So do you happen to know what continent you're standing on? That's important because humans arrived in different parts of the world at different times. There weren't any modern humans in the Americas prior to around 16,000 years ago, or in Europe before 40,000 years ago, Australia before 46,000 years ago, Asia before 80,000 years ago, or Africa before 250,000 years ago. If you've somehow found yourself time traveling to Antarctica, is it warm? outside. If it is, you're sometime before 15 million years ago. And if it's not, and you don't see any other humans, you might be sometime before 1947, the year when the first permanent human base was set up on the continent. And if you're on an island, this could get a little trickier. Humans didn't arrive on Madagascar until around 500 CE. Iceland didn't have humans before the late 9th century. Hawaii didn't have anybody until around 900. And New Zealand was uninhabited until after 1200. So if you don't see people, you're between 65 million million years ago and any of these times depending on where in the world you are. Next up, if you do see other humans, do you only see Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, or a mix of various human species? Because if you only see Neanderthals and no Homo sapiens, you're between 250,000 and 200,000 BCE, and you're stuck with them, so have fun. If you see humans and Neanderthals together, or other human species on the other hand, it means that you're somewhere between 200,000 and 25,000 BCE, which is 
is the upper end for our estimates when Neanderthals went extinct. If you happen to be in Papua New Guinea though, you might be up until 15,000 years ago because the Denisovan human population may have survived there up until then. Alright, so if you only see humans that look like modern humans, the next big question is this. Are they acting relatively normal? Like, do you see evidence of culture, burials, or language? Because if not, you're still probably trapped between 200,000 and 50,000 BCE, and you just haven't met the Neanderthals yet. However, if the humans are acting normal to what you would expect, then you know you're after 50,000 BCE. So to narrow it down even further, you probably need a quick astronomy lesson. Depending on which hemisphere you time travel to, the brightest constellations that are easiest to spot are the Big Dipper in the north and the Southern Cross in the south. These constellations are the brightest because the stars that make them up are located closer to Earth than most, which means that their movements over time are observable. So out of these three choices, which one is the closest to what you're currently seeing in the night sky? Option 1 means you're indeed somewhere around 50,000 BCE. Option 2 means you're sometime around 25,000 BCE. And Option 3 means you're sometime around the modern era. So if you see Option 3, do you see any evidence of these humans lurking about farming, or is it only hunter-gatherers still? If it's still just hunting and gathering, you're probably between 25,000 and 10,500 BCE. Or, alternatively, it could be yesterday on North Sentinel Island where uncontacted hunter-gatherers still exist. But if you do see farming, the answer of where you are can get complicated. Different parts of the world came up with farming at different points in time, you see. If you're in the Middle East, for example, and see it, you're post 10,500 BCE. If you see domestic sheep, you're post 9,000 BCE, and cattle would be post 8,500 BCE. If you're in China, farming is post 8,000 BCE, India is after 7,000 BCE, Mesoamerica is after 6,700 BCE, and Europe isn't until around 4,500 BCE or so. So if you do see farming, do you also see people riding around on horses? Because if you don't, you're before before 4000 BCE, and if you do, you're after it. Next question, do you see people using wheels? If you do, you're sometime after 3500 BCE. Arguably even more important though, do you see any evidence of people writing? Because writing was first developed in the Middle East and Egypt around 3100 BCE, in China around 2000 BCE, and Mesoamerica by 650 BCE. So if you do see writing, you're sometime after these dates based on where you're at. It's also important that you pay attention to the alphabets people are using, because they came into existence existence at different times. This, for example, is ancient Phoenician, which came into being around 1200 BCE. It gave birth to the Aramaic alphabet that looks like this around 600 BCE, which further gave birth to the Arabic script around 100 CE. Here is the Greek alphabet, which initially came into being around 700 BCE, which inspired the Latin script we're all familiar with after about 600 BCE. If you're in Britain, the Anglo-Saxons didn't start using the Latin script until the 6th century. So if you don't see any Latin, you're sometime before then. Finally, the Cyrillic alphabet didn't come into existence until the 9th century in Bulgaria, so if you don't see any Cyrillic in Eastern Europe, you're probably before then. So if you see all of these alphabets, do you also see people writing them on paper? Paper wasn't invented until around 100 BCE in China, so if you see no paper, you might be located before then. How about any evidence of gunpowder weapons? Gunpowder wasn't invented until the 9th century in China, and it wasn't used in warfare any time prior to the year 900. So if you see guns or cannons being used, you're definitely sometime after this. In regards to our previous discussion on alphabets and writing, do you only see scrolls or books that are handwritten, or do you also also see printed books. The printing press and mass-produced books weren't invented until 1439 in Germany, so if you see a book or a script that looks like it's printed, the odds are pretty good that you're sometime post-1439. And that means you're getting pretty close enough at this point to simply being able to ask someone what year you're in. If you're an average English speaker, any year post-1500 would probably be possible for you to vaguely understand what people are saying in England, but it's fairly complicated to say for certain. Modern English, as it's spoken today wouldn't be fully in place in England until the end of the 17th century. You can see this painfully clear by analyzing the history of the famous Lord's Prayer. In modern English from 1690 to today, it reads as follows, and it's completely understandable to our modern tongues. In early modern English, however, between 1450 and 1690, it read like this, which is still mostly understandable, but a little bit different. This is why you'd probably be capable of asking someone what year it is and finding out an answer anytime post-1500, so long as you're in England and can speak English. But English anytime prior to 1450 is just unintelligible 
simple gibberish to most modern English speakers. For example, this is the same Lord's Prayer in Middle English between 1066 and 1450, and this is the same prayer in Old English prior to 1066. English was a completely different language back in those days, so effectively, if you can't understand what anybody is saying in England, you're probably sometime before the year 1500. And if you can understand people, then just ask them what year it is, and you'll hopefully figure it all out from there. Fortunately, you probably won't end up alone in an ice age or stranded with dinosaurs anytime soon. Unfortunately, you might be stuck at home, like I am, and feel like you may as well be in a Hadean volcano. If you can relate, then I've got the perfect suggestion. This class on cinema-style filmmaking using an iPhone by Niles Gray and Caleb Babcock that's available right now on Skillshare. And if you've already tackled that home movie project, you can also learn to illustrate your time-traveling adventure with this incredible drawing course by Brooke Glazer. Skillshare is, of course, an online learning community with millions of members who want to further their own creative goals. When you're a member, you can take these classes I mentioned, as well as thousands of other classes on any subject you can imagine. It's a perfect activity while you're stuck at home, or if you'd like to sharpen any of your school or work skills. Best of all though, you can get two whole months for free if you're one of the first 1,000 people to sign up by clicking the link in the description or by going to skl.sh slash real Life Lore 33. You get access to their thousands of courses for just $10 a month when you sign up for an annual subscription afterwards. It's a great way to learn new skills and support real life lore at the same time. And as always, thank you for watching.